You know what I was thinking? Pretty much all day today, and on the ride home for sure, I really want to make a vlog today. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So I've got something really awesome to show you guys later on in the video, and it has something to do with the lighting in this office. So my house seems to be always dark. I have dark colors. Um, most of my windows are covered with overhead porches or with overhangs, I guess you would say, where light, sunlight cannot get in very well. This window right here, most, all my windows are oversized windows, so that helps. But there's only a certain amount of time during the day when this window or my other windows get enough light to be able to film a video with. So over time trying to do YouTube videos, I have invested in some lighting to make my video quality look a little better to kind of help the dark scene that I have going on. And in this video, I am going to upgrade again. So I've got a couple here I'm gonna show you that I currently use. I'm gonna tell you some things I do and don't like about it. And I'm also gonna show you what I am picking up here in a little while. I turned the house lights on to help in here while I'm showing you. So what I typically film my videos with is a 120D Mark II. It's from Aperture and it's a light storm version. It is an awesome light. It is, you know, people all over YouTube use it. That's kind of where I got the inspiration and the idea to get one of my own. What really kind of drew me to this thing also is the light dome mini right here. So this softbox is very small compared to some larger ones. Now it doesn't put off as big of a, a, of a light source, but it allows me to use it in this office where I don't have much room. So you can see if I go over here, how much room it takes up in the in the room. Not very much, Not definitely not compared to a larger softbox that would be you know three foot deep maybe even further counting the actual light itself because the light's probably 10 inches just from the, uh, the modifier right here. So it takes up a lot of room. You gotta have a lot of space to use the larger lights and the larger light source. But I just have one of these. Uh, over the years, I picked up a Godox version right here. This is just like the Aperture Light Storm, but just not near as good quality or it does not have the same amount of output. Now, basically to have good lighting in here while filming videos, I have to have my key light on, which is normally the aperture light, and have this light just bouncing stuff off the ceiling just to kind of have a little bit better ambient lighting in here to, you know, to help with the cameras. And then kind of a uh, last resort, you have to use lenses with a low aperture or a low f-stop as you would say, which helps more light get into the camera lens. And that it really does more than any kind of lighting does in here. If you have just regular house lighting or like one key light only, if you get a, a lens with a lower aperture number, like I have a couple that are like 1.8, 1.4, let a whole lot of light in your camera and it'll really change your day as far as uh, being able to have good lighting in your videos. And speaking of light in the videos, I got me a new practical light right here. So I went shopping with my mom. I run across this lamp and I liked it. I think it's a good size for in here and especially something to have just a little bit of extra kind of uh, character or texture in the background of my videos. So I picked this thing up, but I have a Philips Hue bulb in here so I could control it with the rest of my lights in the room here, other than the video lighting, obviously. And I ordered me another bulb for this lamp. Now, the, the bulb that's in there, I stole from the lamp right over there behind my computer. <laughs> so I don't have one over there right now, but when I bought the lamp, I went ahead and ordered me another, another bulb from Amazon and it came in today. I'm gonna go grab that. So this is the Philips Hue Edison bulb. I've never owned one, and it is just a white color, or I guess a, uh, I guess it's gonna be more of a, a orange color. <laughs> We're gonna try it out. If it ain't no good, I'll just return it. You know, it'd really be nice if we had like an overhead shooting rig of some kind to kind of get the full unboxing experience. You know what? I might can do that. There we go. Get my knife. Figure out how it's taped. It sure does look fancy. It's a pretty good sized bulb too. That is what it looks like. It's pretty big. It feels bigger than all the rest of the bulbs. So it says on the box that it is 2100 Kelvin. So that is a really, really orange color compared to like the traditional 32, 3300 kind of Kelvin for like an incandescent bulb. So it's gonna be just a little bit more orange than I thought. That's my favorite color. This is so much harder than it looks. All right, let's turn it on. Oh, it's orange. That is really, really orange. <laughs> wow. I think the orange is so, so crazy right now because right when you first get the bulbs and put them in a lamp they're usually turned to 100 brightness and you have to go into the app to kind of 
choke it down and put it wherever you want it. Alright, so we got it pulled up. Edison lamp. Room, office, Edison lamp, save. Oh, she's working now. Okay, so I got it set up and I have it on. I turned the brightness down. It looks a lot better, but there is something I'm not really liking, and that is how how the light kind of falls out of the bottom of the shade here. So you can see about a quarter inch of it. And I don't really like that. I may find a new spot for that bulb and just replace it with the one that was in there and just use that one somewhere else. That bulb would really be cool with just a lamp with no shade. If I just had like a, an open end lamp where the bulb would be showing, that would look really cool on video, I think. That could be something I could try in the future as well. I also want to unbox two more things that I got in the mail today. I don't know if everything come in that I ordered, but I think I have at least one of them in before we go to get my new lights. All right, so the first one I have is from Small Rig. Now, I love their products. I'm sure you've seen them over my channel before. I've made videos about them before. They make excellent quality uh, rigging equipment uh, or camera equipment, you know, all kinds of things for the camera world or the YouTube world, as I would say for me, that are just a really good price for what you get. I had to order something from eBay the other day because I couldn't find it anywhere else. And I happened to glance at the Articulate Norms because I've had one for a long time that broke on me. And I use the ball heads and super clamps in here with the small rig brand super clamps a lot. But I'm down to just one little bitty Articulate Norm from them and I told myself if they have some, I'm gonna order me some new ones. And that's exactly what I did. I don't know which one this is, and I'm, it looks like it's not two of them, I ordered two. One thing I really like about small rig products is their packaging comes in this nice, like heavy Ziploc bag. And inside of that, where the parts are, it comes with some packing uh, material. So it's a really good quality way to ship something and it, it's always taken care of. I've never had any damaged products from them or anything. But this looks to be the seven and a half inch version of the articulating arm. I also ordered a nine inch, and I don't believe this came in yet, but these things are super useful. I use them for everything. Um, I've got a light mounted right here above me that I'm using one right now on. It's actually just a double ball head version, but a small rig brand built just like this. It's constructed out of metal. I mean, it's just awesome. Now I have had one break on me before but it was not a small rig brand. It was a cheaper Pingashi brand or something. They're on Amazon, they're easy to find. But it was a long one, it was a, it was 11 inch uh, adjustable you know, linkage. But having all that, that stress and weight so far from this kind of pivot point where it pries down and locks everything together because this one clamp locks all the moving parts together. Everything can move until you lock this and it locks everything. So it broke on me, I guess, from just being under stress and not being well built like the small rigs are. I've never had a small rig break on me. This is all metal. The, the rods, the gear, this little shaft up here that the ball head kind of uh, turns around in is all metal. And it also comes with a little hot shoe mount. So really cool thing to have around the office to mount pretty much anything to. Now in this package is something very special because I could not find it in the store and I had to order it. I looked everywhere and I could not find the size I needed. So this is double-sided 3M tape, but it's only a quarter inch wide. Now, I'm sure you're thinking like, why don't I just get a bigger one and cut the size I need? Well, for one, I don't want to cut, you know, that many feet because it'd be annoying trying to keep it straight. I'm not doing it. So I was going to find the right size. Now this is to repair the mounting tape on the back side of one of my light strips. So flashback a couple years, I used to have a light strip on the back side of my desk right here. And I had it moved all the way around, moved it around the office so many times, it kind of started to get peeling off just a little bit and getting a little bit uh, less sturdy, I guess, less stuck. And I ended up pulling it off. And when I pulled it off, it left the residue from the tape all over my desk and I was I was a little upset because me and my dad spent a lot of time uh, hand building this desk and I really don't want to mess it up. 
I really don't even touch it. This I've got this wood board on top of it that's not even the actual desk. It's just laying on top. So I really want to take care of my desk. It means a lot to me. It's kind of sentimental that uh, we built it together, and I love it. I'm not putting the light strip back on here anymore, but I thought I would go ahead and rebuild my light strip and get it usable again and maybe stick it somewhere else, possibly on the back side of that toolbox back there. But it's just a thought, but I uh, wanted to get this so when the project comes up, I'm ready. By the way, let me know down in the comments what y'all think of the lamp back here. Um, do you think I should leave that bulb in it or replace it with the regular bulb that was in there from before and maybe use the Edison without a lampshade somewhere? I think that would be a really cool look. I don't really have nowhere to do it or a good size, uh, I guess you would say, uh, half lamp. I could make one, I know, but um, I just want it to look right. I don't want it to look kind of unproportional or out of, out of spot. But let me know down in the comments what y'all think on that. By the way, this is what the double ball head looks like that is holding my light. And I just have it clamped to the overhead shooting rig right here just to give me some extra light down below. Buddy, uh, what are you doing? You chilling in the recliner? Boy, you look comfy. Yeah, my boy, bro. So my mom has just called me and said that uh, she's heard on the news or the radio or something that the world has gone crazy again and that people are running out of gas everywhere. Not like running out on the side of the road, but all the gas stations are running out because there's some kind of issue with the pipeline again, just like always. So I am going to run uptown and get gas. That way I ain't got to deal with that um, tomorrow or whenever I need gas again. It kind of gets old how people just freak out every time something happens. Um, I don't even need gas really, but now I'm going to have to make a special trip up there just to make sure I have some for the rest of the week to go to work and to do what I need to do. It just gets old. People people blow up, kind of like when there is a uh, like a bad storm coming. They go and get milk and bread, but now they got to get gas and run everybody out of everything. Those last two or three shots was accidentally shot with the microphone uh, using both mics on the D4 Deity Duo on a D on a D on a D D D D D D D on a Deity D4 Duo. So Zach, me, when I'm editing this, when you're editing this make sure you watch out for that. You might need to work on some audio or learn how to fix it. You get what I mean. It's already starting to rain again outside. I didn't even know it was supposed to rain. But we've had some, excuse me, gotta start up the race car. Is that right, buddy, bro? In the race car, big boy. So yeah, here we've had some scattered thunderstorms about all day today. And apparently some of them were bad around here. Oh, this thing is out of fuel, actually. I forgot about that. <laughs> so I forgot the race car was still having some uh, brake issues. <laughs> and that's why I hadn't been driving it. And uh, listen to this. <laughs> it's bad. I think it's a wheel bearing or maybe a brake rotor might be messed up on it. Or uh, warped, I guess would be the correct word. I need to get that fixed. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> Where you going? You waiting on the gas to fill up, big boy? Pump slow as crap because everybody's sitting here trying to get fuel at the same time. Is that right, buddy, bro? Huh? You in the you in the race car? You in the race car, big boy? All right, so I walk in the house from uh, getting back and getting gas, and I. Uh, Finally got a message from the guy I'm supposed to be meeting to get those lights. And he's gonna be up there in about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna turn around and go get fuel in the truck while I'm getting those lights. Well, you better hurry up if you go on me. So here's my new prize. So what this is, is a tri-pack of Aperture LED panels. Now this particular kit comes with a 672C, 
which is a color adjustable model and it comes with two 672s which i believe is the spotlight models i think there's a couple different variants of different setups you can get but this is what this kit has and i'm fine with that they can be run off of the big sony batteries like this each panel takes two batteries to light or you can run it with the included ac adapter cable just straight from the wall and what i didn't know until doing some research about these lights is when you have the ac adapter plugged into the led panel if you have batteries on the back of the panel they're charging while it's plugged up so that is an awesome feature technically your your light should always be uh fully charged if you want to go take it and use it wirelessly somewhere so that is awesome also it comes with some um different diffusion things here and a remote up here just like my big light so my plans with these led panels is to start replacing some of the other lighting i have in the office to something that is a little bit easier to use a little bit more powerful and a better light source in general for instance right here on my overhead shooting rig setup i have i've got this small aperture mc light and i've also got this big godox thing now what my plan is is to take this godox light down and maybe set up another filming set in a different bedroom but put one of the aperture led panels back up here and that will allow me to take that big thing up off the desk and kind of reduce the amount of clutter while still being able to have a light panel that's articulating this big godox light you can't really aim it anywhere because the the mounting mechanism is so kind of hard and uh there's not much adjustment to it but if i was to mount one of those big light panels up there maybe with a ball head as long as it's strong enough to hold the panel I'll be able to move the light wherever I need to and I think that is a really cool idea and reducing the amount of clutter is what means the most to me because I don't like having that big thing up in my way now the next place I would mount one of those lights is right here on my YouTube studio I have set up right here now this thing has a camera microphone built onto it and I typically have a light hanging off to one side but I have been recently been using the 120d on a separate stand but ideally you would like to have another light mounted directly to this YouTube stand that way you have everything in one and you can and you can roll it around and move it all with the light staying with it so on this rig just like this microphone arm you'd have another arm come out here with your LED panel on it so looking at it from the front you would have an articulating LED in this area connected to the tripod itself which would eliminate this big light and all that stand and it would all be connected to just this so that is the use i would get out of these panels right here and i would probably set that up tomorrow start playing around with where i might want to mount them and how i can mount them and then maybe utilize them in the next video or so i'm also going to be doing a video on my new overhead shooting setup and teaching you how to do one for yourself as well as showing off my new youtube studio on wheels that i've built so those are two different videos coming up soon that you might want to check out if that interests you at all. I believe that's going to wrap it up for this vlog. Uh, thank you for kind of hanging out with me and uh, looking at my new little toys here. Be sure to watch out for the videos I post about the shooting rig and the YouTube studio setup that I have on wheels. And I will catch y'all in the next video. See ya.